There is a popular quote frequently attributed to Albert Einstein that goes, if bees were to disappear from Earth, we would have less than four years to live. While this might not be exactly accurate, the fact remains that humankind would suffer greatly if bees were to go extinct. Why? Pollination. Insects are the number one pollinators of all the crops that we consume. Without them, over 75% of flowering plants would not be fertilized. However, over 40% of insect species are going extinct across the world, with one in three already being endangered. Building an army of robot insects that can pollinate flowers isn't another bored scientist trick, but a world-saving technology. Beautiful, isn't it? It's an engineering marvel on all sides, scaling down a robot to that size. But how are they able to do this? To make robots of that size, it's more than just making the components smaller. For instance, a bee's wings beat 230 times per second, which allows it to lift into the air. To replicate that in robot insects, we have to consider a few things. What motors are small enough yet so powerful as to move the wings? How do we power flight in a robot that weighs less than a paperclip? Most importantly, how can we fit sensors on something the size of a rice grain so they can interact with their environment? MIT scientists found the answers. Before robot insects were designed to be pollinators, like bees, they were originally made in the likeness of fireflies. Using nature's luminescent creatures as a prototype, they were able to design a robot the size of an insect that helps in search and rescue missions. These robots find survivors in a collapsed building and use their light to signal others for help. The light emitted from these robots allows them to communicate with each other. Although these particular robot insects did not have any sensors, they were able to perfect the technology that allowed them to fly, piezoelectric actuators. These actuators act like a muscle in the sense that they contract and release when a voltage is passed through them. They are made by alternating layers of elastomer and carbon nanotube electrodes in a stack, which is rolled into a squishy cylinder, very much like muscle fibers. These artificial muscles contract and expand so rapidly that they mimic the rapid wing beats of real insects. Having wings to fly on was only the beginning. There was also the bigger issue of powering these wings and delivering enough power to sustain a muscle that contracts so fast. As remarkable as the breakthrough was, reviews on this technology have been rather mixed. One commenter on YouTube said, as a material science engineer, I must say I'm so incredibly fascinated by the engineering feat behind these tiny bots. It's so amazing. These bee bots have such huge potential in the future. Thanks for the work of these brilliant scientists at MIT and their cutting edge research. On the other hand, some viewers had a more pessimistic view of how these tiny bots would affect our society. One user said, It's honestly terrifying what someone could use this technology for. My first thought is assassinations of important people using some kind of venom. My second thought is someone spying on me through my bedroom window at night. Another person voiced similar concerns, saying, I'm sure that these tiny robots made by well-intentioned and pure-hearted scientists for search and rescue will one day be used as weapons by ambitious and aggressive politicians. And honestly, I can't fault the logic of the people that believe tiny flying insects in the wrong hands could serve a nefarious purpose. But before that becomes a major concern, the MIT team will have to figure out a sustainable power source. The innovative approach to this problem was lightweight solar cells that transmitted power through laser beams. This interesting design is based on Harvard's micro-robotics lab Microbot called the RoboBee. Infrared laser beams are aimed at a tiny photovoltaic cell which can harvest the 250 milliwatts required to get the robot airborne. The output of the photovoltaic cell is about 7 volts. The addition of a boost converter and microcontroller maximizes the output of the cell, allowing complete functionality and control of the wings. Another cool thing about the wing technology is that the wing muscles themselves can produce an electric current. Not only does the voltage from the cells cause these muscles to contract so rapidly, but the muscles themselves generate electricity when they change shape. Yes, you heard that right. The piezoelectric actuators generate an electric charge when they are bent stretched or compressed, 
So, while undergoing the vibrations that flex this material, the mechanical strain causes the dipoles in the material to shift. This shift generates a voltage across the material, which can then be stored in a material. Typically, it's not a lot of power, about 10 to 200 microwatts, just enough to power the tiny sensors and transmitters on our robot insect. Laser beams and wing vibrations aren't the only way that a flying robot insect is able to generate power. Piezoelectric devices, when placed in an airflow, convert kinetic energy into electricity. The multifaceted approach of generating electricity to keep the robot insect in motion is one that is both innovative and energy-saving. Right now, researchers are envisioning other ways to harvest energy, such as thermal, and incorporating all these energy sources into powering the robot insect. Doing this would allow for autonomous long-range flights without the need for heavy batteries and allow for better operational capacities. Another mind-blowing fact I learned about the RoboBee is that beyond hacking flight, it's also incredibly fast for its size. One of the scientists working on the project, Robert Woods, claims that it's twice as fast as Usain Bolt when adjusted for body size. Impressive, right? Well, when you're that small, gravity starts to matter less, allowing these insects to crawl trot and even climb vertical surfaces. In one field test, RoboBee was able to land on a vertical surface using electrostatic pads, mimicking how real insects cling to walls. For a technology whose first robot was a mimic of fireflies with no sensors, there have been major improvements since its inception. Today, these bug-sized robots use self-clearing electrodes to isolate micro-sparks and avoid failure. These new repair techniques enable the bugs to recover quickly after suffering damage to their muscles. Before now, a tiny hole in the actuator muscles might have resulted in a crash as the wings stopped working immediately due to the defect. But like I said, all of that is in the past now. With the new technique, robots could still fly despite having 10 needles jabbed into their artificial muscles and a large hole burned into the actuator. The self-repair techniques are so effective that even when researchers cut off 20% of its wingtip, this bug can still fly. Dr. Kevin Chen, the professor whose lab developed this technique, is optimistic that this technology could get even better as they intend to mimic the extraordinary abilities of everyday insects that lose up to 40% of their wings and still fly. The phenomenon, called the self-clearing effect, was first discovered by researchers 15 years ago. The process involves applying high voltage to the actuators, which disconnects the local electrode around a small defect, thereby isolating that failure from the rest of the electrode. This method ensures that the artificial muscles can still work, despite the damage. Dr. Chen and his collaborators were able to do this by first optimizing the concentration of carbon nanotubes that comprise the electrodes in the actuator muscles. By having fewer rolls of carbon in the electrode, Self-clearing was improved, but at the cost of reducing the actuator's power density. Finding this balance between the self-clearing property of the room and its ability to fly has been quite a headache for Dr. Chen and his team. Even an optimized actuator muscle can fail after suffering from severe damage, like a big hole that lets too much air into the device. In an interview with MIT, Dr. Chen said, Nature is the ultimate engineer, and we're still learning how to copy even its simplest designs. Our robot insects are a tribute to millions of years of evolution. So it's no surprise the team hasn't figured out the secrets of Mother Nature overnight. However, the repair techniques are still very effective in maintaining flight performance resembling that of an undamaged robot. Coupled with laser surgery, where the researchers carefully cut along the outer contours of a large defect, the damaged actuator was able to recover 87% of its performance. But there's one more piece of insane news I just have to share. The National University of Defense Technology in Hunan Province unveiled what state media called a mosquito-like spy drone on military broadcaster CCTV7. Measuring just 0.6 to 2 centimeters in length and tipping the scales at around 0.3 grams smaller than a fingernail, this micro-aerial vehicle mimics the appearance of a mosquito with delicate, leaf-like wings, thin, wiry legs, and a matte black husk. Despite its miniature size, it houses ultra-miniature cameras, microphones, 
and flight sensors, enabling surveillance in indoor environments and tight spaces where conventional UAVs can't penetrate. Experts note its stealth makes it nearly invisible to the naked eye and radar systems, but like all tiny drones, it faces clear limitations. Short battery life, susceptibility to indoor air currents, low payload capacity, and limited communications range. This mosquito spy has triggered alarm among privacy and defense experts. Could swarms of these micro drones infiltrate our homes, offices, or diplomatic spaces undetected? I guess we've officially entered the era of cyborg insects. And there's a pretty wild case in Southeast Asia where scientists from Nanyang Technological University, Osaka University, and Hiroshima University have developed a swarm of them for a single purpose, to navigate challenging terrain. Cyborg insects are created by equipping real insects with tiny sensor devices which they carry on their back. It might sound almost unrealistic, but this alteration means that we can control insects remotely. This was first demonstrated by Professor Hirotaka Sato in 2008. Demonstrations show that these insects can be used in a search and rescue mission. It's more like a leader-follower dynamic being employed in these missions, where one cyborg insect guides the others in the missions. Researchers use Madagascar hissing cockroaches that have been fitted with a lightweight circuit board, sensors, and a rechargeable battery. Picture this, a living cockroach carrying a tiny electronic backpack that allows it to move through debris, rubble, and basically any rough terrain. These cyborg creatures, unlike the conventional robot insect, adapt better to such rough environments. Cockroaches, for instance, have evolved over millions of years to be incredibly efficient at navigating a complex environment. This natural capacity of these creatures cannot be completely replicated in purely artificial systems. Besides being more dynamic, they're also more energy efficient. This new swarm of cyborgs consume significantly less energy and are more resilient. The leader-follow approach applied to the swarm of insects allows the swarm to adapt dynamically. The leader is first equipped with the control algorithm, then tiny electrical stimulations nudge the insect in a particular direction. From the leader's control backpack, the rest of the swarm is guided by the transmission between the backpacks and those of the soldiers. This feature results in a coordinated movement, where the insects assist each other to overcome obstacles and adjust adequately when one of them is trapped. In a real-world application, this technology is brilliant. Take, for example, rescue missions where large areas must be surveyed in an obstacle-laden terrain. Swarms of cyborg cockroaches can navigate these regions strapped with a backpack. If one of the insects detects a trapped human, then it can wirelessly alert the control system. It's beyond just another vain project and has the potential to greatly enhance response efficiency during disasters. Pollinating flowers and finding rescue victims are not the only ways that we can use robot insects. DARPA, a research and development agency, has produced drones weighing less than 10 grams to infiltrate hostile territory. DARPA's program manager suggests that birds of prey and flying insects show the kind of capabilities that are desired in unmanned vehicles. Insects can enter enemy territory, go undetected, and navigate indoor territories. It would be a manifestation of the idiom, fly on the wall. Except in this scenario, the wall could be a top-secret military bunker or the inside of the Pentagon. Imagine compromising an entire nation's defense system with one robot insect. The U.S. Army Research Laboratory in Adelphi, Maryland is currently working on developing robot insects with wings that are just three to five centimeters in length. The wings are made of zirconium titanate, a material that flaps and bends when a small voltage is applied. These robots are powered by ultrasonic motors measuring just two to three millimeters in length. While this surveillance insect is being developed at the moment, it is expected to take another 10 to 15 years for it to be fully functional. The possibilities are endless, and beyond international espionage, there's one more hitch. Is it ethical to give an autonomous swarm the power to make a fatal decision? Understanding that these insects are capable of being fully militarized, thinking about them as autonomous weapons is certainly concerning. To what extent 
Can these swarms of military insects even distinguish between combatants and civilians? As a result, technology of this kind falling into the wrong hands can present a real danger to human lives. That's why the United Nations and other tech leaders have raised concerns about such scenarios. Because while insect-like drones and autonomous weapon flies may not be real, the infrastructure and technology to produce them are evolving. And there are calls to regulate this development before it outpaces the law. However, China's recent demonstration of thousand drone swarms has raised eyebrows as it has become evident that the U.S. is not alone in this race. The country made headlines earlier this year when they announced their intentions to launch one of the world's largest drone carriers, aptly nicknamed the Drone Mothership. Allegedly, the aircraft weighs 10 tons and can carry up to 100 smaller unmanned aerial vehicles, UAVs, which weigh an additional 6 tons. The UAVs are most likely going to be kamikaze drones, which are often armed with explosives and programmed to crash into their targets. Sounds eerily similar to the Empire's ultimate weapon in Star Wars. Beyond its bulk and weapons, the drone mothership can also travel quite a distance, being able to transport its swarm across 4,350 miles. That's more than the distance you'd cover going from Los Angeles to New York City. As a result, being able to move a hundred insect-like drones across several miles could potentially change military warfare. Russia already uses kamikaze drones extensively in their war on Ukraine. Imagine what they could do with a fully autonomous swarm. We might be looking at a new kind of arms race. After all, a colony of miniature insects can overwhelm enemy air defenses with their numbers and stop air attacks. They could also identify targets and coordinate simultaneous strikes on the enemy. Espionage would also reach new heights as it becomes harder to detect drones. You can't possibly swat at every fly on the wall assuming that it's some advanced robot insect coming to steal information. The possibilities alone are endless and everyone is racing to build their swarm of militarized insects. Cyborgs and robot insects appear to be a scary reality, but there is more optimism than fear for many. It is expected that in the future, robot insects might be just as widespread as phones. Yes, these creatures might soon become commonplace in homes. Imagine insects that do not just buzz in your ears or leave red itchy marks from their bites, but can clean your home. Micro-cleaning robots are a possibility with this type of technology. Robotic insects can clean inside your air vents or other narrow places that are hard to reach. It's been an exciting look into the world of artificial insects, and I would like to hear your thoughts. What part about robot insects did you find fascinating? Do you think we are playing too close to the edge by creating this nature's mimic?